1.2. Let's continue working with formal definition of the limit. So, the examples we solved in our previous lecture were very simple, ideal situation. In order to show the methodology, in order to introduce the concept of the limits. And now, let's review the first part of the previous lecture. So, the formal definition, let me remember you. The formal definition of the limit says that the value of the function minus the value of the limit in some x place will be less than or equal to epsilon, while this x minus the value which we are towards the function, we are towards the variable of the function, will be less than or equal to delta. So, how we can demonstrate that the limit exists or not using this definition? So, let's see, first of all, how we will proceed if the limit exists, or how we will demonstrate that the limit exists. Let's provide real values. For example, let's consider that we have f x minus 3. No. Let's consider another value, mm, minus 5, let me use the, the book, the book, minus 3, minus 3, the book example, will be less than or equal some very small value while x minus 2 will be less than or equal to another very small value. So it happens if, if we have a function, somewhere here function, which in x equals or towards this number 2, we have here 3. Uh, how we demonstrate that the limit exists? We demonstrate the limit of the six by this way. We are approaching so delta, delta. We have here epsilon, epsilon. If the value of the delta and epsilon are comparable, are very small, the limit exists limit exists. Look, it's very simple, a logic interpretation of the problem. We have here the function f in x. If these two values, for example, delta will be 0 0.01, uh, let's consider that epsilon will be 0 0.005 or vice versa. So comparable numbers, very small numbers. Now, how we decide that the limit do not exist based on this interpretation. Let's consider that we have f in x. I don't know the limit. I will write n. So less than or equal to epsilon while x minus the value we are towards to, uh, let's consider a, will be less than or equal to delta. Suppose that we have rational function. It's the easier example to demonstrate that, that case, that the limit do not exist. So we have here an asymptote. 
in A, suppose, a function like this. And now, we apply the procedure we just developed. We approach, we approach from both sides, deltas, eh? approximately. Eh? Even if they are not the same, doesn't matter. Approximately. So let's consider that delta is something like this, 0 0.01. Eh? Is equal or less than 0 0.01. No, but when we go some step more, look, the, the, the new interception will be will be somewhere here. So as you can see the difference, and still this is not the limit, eh? the limit is epsilon epsilon will be a very big number. It's not necessarily infinity. A big number. A big number. So there is not limit. Check a couple of examples using the formal definition of the limits. So, example number one. Given the limit of the function two x minus five. at x towards 3 equals to 1. So the question is to find delta given epsilon equals to 0 0.01. So first of all, we have to find delta and demonstrate that the limit exists. So let's apply the definition we learned before. Function in x minus l has to be less than or equal epsilon. And x minus c has to be less than or equal to delta. So we have here fx 2x minus 5 minus the limit minus 1. less than or equal to 0 0.01 correct so we have here 2 x minus 6 less than equal 0 0.01 factoring 2 x minus 3 less than equal 0 0.01 dividing by 2 dividing by 2 we get that x minus 3 less than or equal 0 0.005. But this is what we are looking for. So our delta will be 0 0.005 when epsilon is given 0 0.1. These numbers are comparable and the limit exists. But probably the most important in this example is that we, we learn how to find delta 
given epsilon. We can apply inverse procedure to do the same. Let's check another example. Example number two. Example number two. Given the limit, limit of x squared when x towards 2 equals to 4. Uh, and the question is find delta, find epsilon working on the interval from 1 to 3 on the interval 1,3 so let's check what we have here let's check what we have here we have here a parabola eh? y equals to x squared when x0, 0, zero when 1, 1, uh, I will use larger axis x, shorter y, because of the space limitation. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. When x2, we have 4, 1, two, three, four. When x3, we have nine. So we have a parabola like this. With the precision that I can work on the wall. It's very interesting. The big interval work in one comma three for the limit two. One, two, three. So we are looking for the limit when x towards two right here. And we know that in this moment the limit will be four. Now let's approach from the left and from the right and we will use a big delta look <laughs> one unit delta this is not common this is not common yeah one unit delta corresponding we will have big epsilon but here epsilon and here the second one epsilon they are not equals because this is quadratic equation and secondly because we are using very very big interval so really we have here uh, minimal epsilon one two three three units when delta is one right here um, for the second one we have one two three four five so five unit when when delta is one on the second position okay this position three this position five so let's analyze what is happening here Let's write the definition. The definition says f in x minus the limit minus 4 is less than or equal to epsilon. Epsilon is not given. We are looking for the maximum or minimum epsilon in this interval. So let's rewrite this equation. This will be x2 
minus 4 less than or equal to epsilon. I can, oh, this is a difference of a square. I can write x minus 2 times x plus 2 less than or equal to epsilon. This is the first part. The second part can be written so x minus 2 is less than or equal to delta. So in our analysis, I will not touch this element because this is the element that I am looking for. If I find this element, the value of this element, I have the delta which satisfies this equation on the interval from 1 to 3. So let's check, let's check what happened with this element, with this binomial, for example, at x equals to 1, right here. So 1 plus 2 equals to 3. What happened at 2? Two plus two equals to four. What happened at three x equals to three comma three plus two equals to five. So five is, is the greatest value that can take this element. So I can rewrite it by this way, look, x minus 2 times the maximum value that it can get, 5, less than or equal to epsilon. Now, divide everything by 5, divide by 5, and we get that x minus 2 is less than or equal epsilon over 5. So, we have a comparable values delta is comparable with epsilon and epsilon is five times larger than delta on the position where it gets larger value the biggest value very interesting so this is our delta value So our delta will be epsilon divided by five. Uh, we, knew, we knew that, we knew that, what look, when we have here delta, epsilon will be five times. We knew about that. So this is very interesting. First of all, because we now learned how to find the relationship between delta and epsilon and how to demonstrate that the limit exists.